California Task Force to Study and Develop Reparation Proposals for African Americans. Content Warning it Contains discussions of racial discrimination, sexual assault, torture, lynching and other forms of extreme violence. It contains unedited historical quotations and photographs of white supremacist hatred, torture, lynching, autopsy, and other forms of graphic violence. Discrimination in Government Employment to supporting legal segregation and enabling private discrimination, the federal and California governments discriminated against black workers as employers the federal government in civil and military service has refused to employ black workers, segregated and integrated workforce. Relegated black workers to lower paid, less skilled occupations the state and local governments in California have had similar patterns of discrimination. in the federal civilian service. Civilian service reflected and shaped the racist labor environment of private employers for much of the federal government's history. It was almost totally white or segregated during the 19th century. There was no blanket ban on black workers. officials were allowed to create a patchwork of regulations forbidding employment of African Americans 451 the United States Postal Service was a striking example in 1802 black workers were banned from carrying mail 452 black workers were almost completely excluded from employment until 1861, the year a black man was appointed as a clerk with the United States Postal Service in Boston 453 the century, African Americans made up about 10% of the federal workforce 454 many black workers found steady, valuable jobs in urban post offices, but there was little possibility for advancement 455 President Roosevelt provided some support for threatened black workers in 1903. to allow the town of Indianola, Mississippi, to drive out its black postmaster, instead suspending service at the Indianola post office rather than accept the resignation of postmaster Minnie Cox 456 but this lasted only until the next year. The postmaster was appointed 457 and the tide turned with the election of President William Howard Taft in 1908, who stated in his inaugural address. is not the disposition or within the province of the federal government to interfere with the regulation by southern states of their domestic affairs, and that appointing African Americans to federal offices in prejudiced southern communities would do more harm than good 458. 1913, President Wilson officially segregated much of the federal workforce, including the Treasury, the Post Office, the Bureau of Engraving and Prints, the Navy, the Interior, the Marine Hospital. Department, and the government printing office 459 the federal government created separate offices, lunchrooms, and bathrooms for white and black workers 460 William McAdoo, Secretary of the Treasury. That segregation was necessary to remove the causes of complaint and irritation where white women have been forced unnecessarily to sit at desks with colored men. 461 The federal government fired black supervisors and cut off black employees' access to promotions and better paying jobs. Those jobs for white employees 462. Mr. General Albert S. Burleson segregated, demoted, or fired black workers 463 though no official government records have been found that indicate how many black postal workers were driven from their jobs. There was a clear pattern to segregate, reclassify, and discharge black workers 464.
Donald Wilson's decision to segregate an integrated federal workforce air resulted in lower pay for black workers cut off from better paying jobs, 465 and created separate toilets in the Treasury and Interior Departments 466 This damaged the ability of African Americans to build economic security for example. Washington, D.C., home of many federal jobs, black homeownership fell after President Wilson's actions, in part because black federal employees no longer had access to those better jobs and salaries 467. 1979, the U.S. General Accounting Office found that exams administered by the Office of Personnel Management to screen applicants for federal jobs disqualified black candidates at higher rates than white candidates. No real opportunity for black job seekers to be fairly assessed for federal jobs, 468 few black applicants received scores high enough to have a realistic chance of being considered for employment 469. Later study, commissioned by the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, examined the cases of all 11,920 federal workers fired in 1992, excluding the Postal Service and Uniformed Military Services, and found that 39% of those fired were black. Though black workers comprised only 17% of the workforce at the time 470 while federal personnel officials believed that black employees were fired more often because they tended to be less experienced, less educated, and concentrated in lower-level jobs that experienced more turnover. On that, after every measurable factor was discounted, black workers were still more to be fired at nearly every pay grade, from the lower rungs to the senior executive level 471. At the federal government's history of racism against black workers, black workers currently make up more of the federal civil service at over 18% than in the general population at 14% 472 however, for the senior executive service. The elite core of experienced civil servants responsible for leading the federal workforce, only 10% are black 473. Gation in military service. They reflected the rest of the federal government and American society in enacting racist and segregationist policies for much of its history while African Americans have consistently served in the military since the very beginning of the country. has historically paid black soldiers less than white soldiers and often deemed African Americans unfit for service until the military needed them to fight 474 the military officially remained segregated until 1950 475 black soldiers consistently failed to be recognized for their contributions. failed to follow through on promises of greater opportunities in exchange for service while military service has provided an avenue for African Americans to achieve a measure of economic stability, it has consistently been a place of racial discrimination and segregation. Similarly in the highest ranks today, there continues to be a limited number of African Americans in leadership roles. Revolution and the War of 1812 Americans' military service predates the Republic itself, as do the government's actions discriminating against black soldiers and failing to honor promises in exchange for their service both free and enslaved black soldiers from all 13 colonies. The Continental Army and state militias in the American Revolution 476 during the American Siege of Yorktown in 1781, British troops, in order to extend dwindling food supplies, expelled all black volunteer soldiers they had recruited with promises of freedom 477 one British officer, admitting the betrayal. We had used them to good advantage, and set them free, and now, with, 
fear and trembling, they had to face the reward of their cruel masters. 478 While Joseph Ranger, a free black man from Virginia served in the Navy of Virginia and received wages, a land grant, and later a life pension from the U.S. government, David Baker, an enslaved man on the Isle of Wight. Forced to join the American Navy as a substitute for his enslaver, and was re-enslaved after the War of 479. Woodrow Wilson's order to segregate the federal workforce damaged black economic security. In Washington, D.C., home of many federal jobs, black homeownership fell after President Wilson's actions. Republic was established. The second U.S. Congress passed the Militia Law of 1792 allowing only free able-bodied white male citizen S to serve in the National Militia, which became the National Guard 480. In 1796, James McHenry, the Secretary of War, declared, no Negro, mulatto, or Indian is to be recruited in the Marine Corps. 481 The U.S. Marine Corps continued this ban on African Americans for the next 167 years. War of 1812, regardless of the fact that black soldiers were legally not allowed to serve, black soldiers made up a significant portion of U.S. Navy forces. Approximately one quarter of U.S. soldiers at the Battle of Lake Erie were black 482 while many volunteer black soldiers were explicitly promised freedom or equal opportunities in the future in exchange for their service by the state or federal government, these promises never fully materialized 483. done during the Revolutionary War, British troops recruited black soldiers by promising freedom and land in exchange for service, but they largely failed to deliver in fact. Scott Keyes, The Star-Spangled Banner, the national anthem, contains a little-known but controversial verse understood by some scholars to have been intended as a threat or admonition to black soldiers who have escaped slavery and joined the British cause in a bid for freedom and the means for self-support. Refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave, and the star-spangled banner in triumph doth wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave 484. Civil War The Civil War, African Americans again attempted to join the war effort, notwithstanding the Army's racist treatment and failures to follow through on promises in 1862, Congress amended the law to permit African Americans to enlist in the Union Army, but initially. Menial construction and camp services roles 485 black women labored in refugee camps as servants for Union officers and as laundresses for Union troops 486 African Americans were finally admitted to military service in the Union following the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 487 eventually nearly 200. Old black soldiers, roughly half of whom were formerly enslaved Southerners, served in the Union Army 488. Again, black soldiers were afforded lesser treatment in their military service. Black soldiers were segregated, assigned lowly positions, had few opportunities for placement to officer rank, received lower pay, and faced far more severe disciplinary measures. 489 Second Lieutenant R. H. Isabel, the target during a purge of black officers, resigned in disillusionment in 1863, stating that he joined the United States Army. The sole object of laboring for the good of the Union supposing that all past prejudice would be suspended for the good of our country and that all native-born Americans would unite together to sacrifice their blood for the cause as our fathers did in 1812 and 15. Found that, the same prejudice still exists s 490.
During the Civil War, black soldiers took home net pay of $7 per month, compared to $13 per month for white soldiers 491 and black soldiers faced a higher mortality rate than their white counterparts, largely due to racist differences in medical care on the battlefield 492 one solider lamented. sick are said to be U.S. soldiers and behold we sick are U.S. slaves, 493. Fact, a small number of black soldiers did not serve willingly in the Civil War 494 starting in 1863, some Union officials used tactics similar to enslavers, press gangs, and man-stealers to grow the ranks of the Union Army 495 One Army engineer in 1863 stated that of men forced into service, my men, Colonel. Have not been drafted they have been kidnapped in the night, 496 despite President Lincoln declaring in 1865 that, without the military help of the black freedmen, the war against the South could not have been won, 497 black soldiers were not treated on equal footing. Economic and social hardship is a direct result of the government's actions during the war. Following the Civil War, black soldiers in the 9th and 10th Cavalries and the 24th and 25th Infantries became known as Buffalo Soldiers, 498 with a few exceptions, West Point graduates Henry O. Flipper, John Hanks Alexander. Young, these all black regiments were led by white U.S. Army officers 499 Buffalo Soldiers. Nation's westward expansion by building roads and participating in military actions that included the Red River War 1874-1875 and the Battle of San Juan Hill during the Spanish-American War 1898-500 these men were also some of the first National Park Rangers 501. The legacy of the Buffalo Soldiers is complex these black soldiers fought for their rightful citizenship rights by fighting for a white-led government in government in wars to take the Southwest and Great Plains from Native Americans 502 between 1870 and 1890. Buffalo Soldiers earned medals of honor while fighting Native Americans 503 despite their service, Buffalo soldiers faced discrimination 504 some were able to access higher education, secure better jobs, and own property, but others returned from service only to be lynched 505. Opportunity expanded in the military during the period after the Civil War and more African Americans joined the service, black soldiers continued to serve in the armed forces under segregated and unequal conditions but increased military needs prevailed and, by World War I, there were 380. O black soldiers out of the 4 million total soldiers, a proportion similar to that of black men in the general population 506. War I, black men volunteered to serve in eight all-black army regiments but remained strictly segregated from white soldiers 507 black soldiers were subject to humiliations including wearing discarded Civil War uniforms. For the amusement of white soldiers 508 one black soldier at the time lamented that, the spirit of Saint-Nazaire army station in France is the spirit of the South. 509 This played out in the numbers, only 11% of black soldiers saw combat in World War I. The vast majority were relegated to menial labor 510 This segregation reflected the larger condition of the American economy in that black soldiers were prevented from moving up in ranks to supervisory positions, and positions in some specialized corps were blocked altogether 511. pattern continued in the interwar years and in World War II, when African Americans continued to serve in the military service despite segregation and other racist policies 512 for example, in 1941, the U.S. Army established the 78th Tank Battalion.
Black Armor Unit it was made up of black enlisted men and white officers, but without opportunity for the black soldiers to advance. Baldwin remarked that the treatment accorded the Negro during the Second World War marked a turning point in the Negro's relation to America. A certain hope died, 514. Pattern extended to the actions aimed at helping soldiers returning from fighting in World War II in 1944, the Congress passed the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, commonly known as the GI Bill. The GI Bill included provisions to provide financial assistance for homeownership, opening small businesses. But, like the New Deal legislation before it, it left implementation largely to racist state and local governments and contributed to housing discrimination 515 as a result. Efforts were not fully realized for returning black soldiers for discussion of the role of the Veterans Administration in implementing and maintaining housing segregation, see Chapter 5 for a discussion of the VA's role in education discrimination, see the Chapter 6. World War II to the present. President Roosevelt issued Executive Order 8802 stating, I do hereby reaffirm the policy of the United States that there shall be no discrimination in the employment of workers in defense industries or government because of race, creed, color, or national origin. Quote, the Marine Corps received its first black recruits, but continued to segregate, even though we were all Marines we were kept separate we didn't have barracks, we lived in huts, built from cardboard, painted green Camp Lejeune had barracks but we had huts it was located in the backwoods. Water snakes and bears, said Marine Sergeant Carl Rivas 516. In 1948, President Harry S. Truman issued Executive Order 9981 to desegregate the military 517 but, while the military formally integrated, serious racial discrimination persisted for example, the army did not begin in earnest to integrate its forces until the Korean War. demand for additional troops meant that the army had no choice but to send black troops to replace white troops killed or injured in battle segregated all black army units persisted until 1954 in the marines full integration did not occur until 196518 Despite discrimination by the federal government, black soldiers served and died for their country and have historically used it as a mode of upward mobility out of the South 519. The highest proportion of black individuals ever to serve in an American war came in the Vietnam War 520. Men were disproportionately drafted during the Vietnam War years due to education and occupation deferments that were unavailable to black men due to a centuries of education segregation and discrimination 521. War. The American military no longer believed that black men were not fit for combat 522 black men had a much greater chance of being on the front line and suffered a much higher casualty rate 523 in 1965 alone, black soldiers were almost 25% of those killed in action 524. The United States moved to an all-volunteer military following the Vietnam War and the end to conscription, black soldiers enlisted at a much higher rate than white individuals, leading black representation in the military to be roughly twice their representation in the U.S. population at large 525.
Okay. Racial disparities in the military continue even as lower level troops were integrated, leadership remained almost exclusively white as late as 2020, of the 41 officials holding four-star rank, only two were African Americans 526 based on government data received through the Freedom of Information Act. have found evidence that black service members have been substantially more likely than white service members to face military justice or disciplinary action 527 anecdotal news reports have presented a deep-rooted culture of racism and discrimination in all branches of the armed services 528 on January 6. D21, insurgents stormed the U.S. Capitol, carried a Confederate. Inside the Capitol building, 529 and displayed a noose and gallows in front of it 530 of the more than 700 individuals charged in the January 6th insurrection, 81 people have ties to the military 531. Yeah. African Americans were present in California going back to the Spanish conquest era, they made up only around 1% or less of the population of California until 1920, and under 2% until the 1940s 532 still. Pattern seen in the federal civilian service and military service persisted in California at both the state and local levels black workers faced segregation and racial discrimination in state and local employment even when progress was made. Governments failed to meaningfully address past discrimination, and black workers remained largely shut out of the higher paid leadership roles, a trend that still exists in the present. Till World War II, black workers were absent from many public and private sector jobs in San Francisco for example, no black worker was. Wait as a public school teacher, police officer, firefighter. Streetcar conductor nor is a bank teller or bus or cab driver in the city before 1943 there were no black streetcar workers until 1942, with poet Maya Angelou being one of the first, though this was not due to a lack of available skilled workforce in the area. Evidenced by the fact that within two years there were over 700 black platform operators 534. A rapid transit BART system was built in 1967, no skilled black workers were hired 535 The National Labor Relations Board certified unions did not admit black members, and BART, though a government agency. Refused to use its power to insist on non-discrimination policies by the unions 536 and it was a similar story when Oakland built a new central post office during the same period, not a single black plumber, operating engineer, sheet metal worker, iron worker, electrician. Jupiter was hired for construction of the federally funded government building 537. Pasadena in Southern California similarly employed almost no African Americans in government jobs prior to World War II. In Pasadena they told me they don't hire black teachers, said Ruby McKnight Williams. First black woman to be employed by the city in a professional capacity in the 1940s when Ms. Williams was hired, I found out that no black men were employed by the city except garbage men and two or three men who swept city hall as for black women, even the attendants in the restrooms at the Rose Bowl had never been colored, 538. Of government actions enforced racist and segregationist policies on black Californians in different parts of the state for example, in 1970 Pasadena became the first city outside of the South under a federal court order to desegregate its schools in its ruling on the matter. The district court concluded that the Pasadena School District had discriminated both in its placement of students and in its allocation of teachers as the court observed, the district's failures to comply with its own integration policies had occurred, in connection with Their assignment, hiring, and promotion policies and practices of the district, its construction policies and practices, and its assignment of students, 539. 
segments of the public sector like law enforcement and firefighting continued to discriminate against black Californians when they hired black Californians, hostile work environments sometimes followed 540 The San Francisco Fire Department, for example, had no black firefighters before 1955 and by 1970. Black residents made up 14% of the city's population, only four of the department's 1,800 uniformed firefighters were black 541. Sector employers have provided significant opportunities to black workers, as compared to their private sector counterparts, including in California even still, black workers continue to encounter barriers to career advancement and higher pay 542 as of 2018. Black workers account for 9-8% of California's state civil service, compared to 5-3% of the state's labor force and 5-5% of the population however, that 9-8% share has been disproportionately concentrated in lower salary ranges, black civil servants represented 12-6% of employees earning $40 or less but only 5-7% of workers earning more than $130,000-543. Bay Area Rapid Transit System was built in 1967, no skilled black workers were hired. When Oakland built a new central post office during the same period, not a single black plumber, operating engineer, sheet metal worker, or other skilled laborer was hired. 